Surmilitanye na tasmai shri gurave namaha Nama om Vishnu padaya Krishna pristaya bhutale Srimati bhakti vedanta swaminiti namane Namaste sarasati devi ghoravani pracharine Nirvishesha sanyavadi paschacha desatarine Pancha kalpa tarubhyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patitanam pavane bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavanda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So welcome everyone to our study of Nectar of Devotion for the Bhakti Shastri course. We're on lesson number six. Everyone remember this verse? Everyone? Yes, Maharaj. Right? Yes, Maharaj. Everybody chant. Anya bilasita sunyam jnana karma jnana vritam anoko yena krishna no shilanam bhakti uttamam. Who knows the translation? Surashan, do you know? Yes. Yes, yes, Maharaj, I know. Though, uh, the wording will be a bit, little bit not as it is, okay? Okay, the, those who are in uh, true, uh, those who are in uh, perfect devotional service should be devoid of, uh, uh, should be devoid of uh, uh, material, should be devoid of uh, material desires, knowledge uh, derived from uh, 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 knowledge derived from uh, monoistic, uh, monoistic philosophy, and <clears throat> um, and, um, and, and 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 monoistic philosophy, and uh, and fruitive actions, and fruitive actions. Uh, a devotee should constantly serve Krishna uh, favorably as Krishna desires. Okay. All right, Lila Avatar, Manaji, do you know also translation? Have you learned it yet? Lila Avatar, Manaji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Uh, the, the translation of this verse is... Without reading it. Uh, well, first the class. No, I want you to say it without reading. Have you memorized it yet? Uh, yes, I think so. I will try. Our uh, well, first class, the original service develops that uh, one must be devoid of uh, all material desires, knowledge obtained from uh, knowledge obtained from monistic uh, uh, philosophy and uh, fruitive action. Uh, the the uh, the devotee must constantly serve uh, Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. Okay, good. Not bad. All right, and then the next one. Sarva padi vinir muk. Everybody chant. Sarva padi vinir muk tam tat paratvena mir malam. Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Ruchete. Okay, so uh, Shashik 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 uh, Kant Prabhu, do you know translation? Maharaj, not word to word, but uh, rough understanding, I can say, Maharaj. Okay, go ahead. <coughs> So the, the, the pure devotion service, 
is one uh, is performed when one is free from all kinds of designations and and, and discerns the Lord through his senses. Yeah, Lord. He serves the Lord through his senses, who is the master of the senses. Okay, anybody I might and they um super super my Mataji Keshavi. Krishna Maharaj. Um yes Maharaj, I will try. Um <clears throat> pure devotional service means engaging one's senses in the service of the uh, Rishikesha or the uh, Lord or uh, Master of uh, the Supreme Personality of God who is the master of all senses. And when one uh, devotee renders such service unto the Supreme Lord, um, there are two side effects. One is he is freed from the uh, from all material designations, and uh, <clears throat> by employing uh, the senses um, in the service of the Lord, the senses are also purified. Oh yes, yes, good, very nice. Yes, bhakti or devotional service means engaging all the senses in the service of the Lord, the master of the senses. When the spirit soul renders service unto the Supreme, there are two side effects. One is freed from all material designations, that is sarva upadi. Upadi means the designation. So sarva upadi vinir muktam, freed from all material designations, and one's senses are purified. Tat parat vena nirmalam. So the senses are purified by being employed in the service of Krishna. So that is pure devotional service. All right. So revision from lesson five. We spoke about the qualification for beginning the practice of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti in relation to Prabhupada's mood and mission. Who remembers? What was the qualification for beginning the practice? Krishna? Yes, Prabhu? There was a few qualifications I remember. One is to not be too disgusted by material life or to attach to material life. Yes, Prabhu, yeah. And what Another else? qualification is taste or faith to hear. Yes, oh. right. You have to have some taste to, to hear, to take the instructions. Good. Yes. Okay, then we defined and explained the process of sadhana bhakti with reference to analogies. The process of sadhana bhakti who remembers what was the analogy? Learning to do sadhana bhakti is like what? Thank you, Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Maharaj, as far as I remember, Maharaj, what example of a child learning to walk? Yes, yes, right. Okay. It, it tries and falls, but again tries. So in this way, uh, we also practice in sadhana. Mm -hmm. Good, yes. And then distinction between Vaidhi and Raganuga Satana Bhakti. Is uh, Narayani Mataji here? No, Alu Maharaj, Narayani Mataji had sent me a message that she is not keeping well, so uh, she will not be able to attend today's session also. Oh. So she is uh, anyway watching your classes, I think the recordings on uh, Facebook Live. So right. she just asked me to let you know that she's not keeping well, Maharaj. Okay. What about Melin? Is Melin here? Yes, Maharaj, I'm here. Yes. So, so can you tell me the distinction between Vaidhi and Raganuga Satana Bhakti? Yes, uh, Vaidhi Bhakti is uh, follow the orders of uh, from the special master, and uh, Rag, uh, Raganuga Bhakti is. Uh, uh, is uh, uh, do the devotional service by nature. Yeah. There is different. Why is follows the principles? Yes. Raga, and why is nature? Yes. Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti is spontaneous devotional service. 
spontaneous. And Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti is according to the rules and regulations. Now when you do Raganuga Raga Sadhana Bhakti, does it mean you don't have to follow the rules and regulations? Milan? If you're doing Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti, does that mean you don't have to follow rules and regulations? No. Uh, I need, a, need, need a to follow the regulations. Yes, you do. You have to follow. You still follow the rules and regulations. But you do it naturally, without even thinking about it. Naturally, you want to follow rules and regulations. Okay? Maharaj? Yes? We can give this as an example of how, uh, learning how to drive a car. Initially, we just, we are very cautious in driving. We have to change the gear. We have to put down the steering. And then once we learn how to drive, then we don't, we don't, we just listen to the songs, talk to people and we drive the car. So we can give that example also for this. Raganuga and uh, yeah, Vaidhi Bhakti. Okay. Right. Learning how to drive a car. Uh -huh. I think Prabhupada gave the example about typing. That in the beginning you look to see the letter, but after some time you don't need to look, you just type. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead. Definition of sadhana bhakti. Sudarshan Prabhu can read for us. Definition of sadhana bhakti. Kriti sadhya bhavet sadhya bhava sa sadhana abhida. Nitya Siddhya Bhavishya Prakritiyam Ridhi Sadhyata When transcendental devotional service by which love for Krishna is attained is executed by sense, it is called Sadhana Bhakti or the regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion it eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. Bhakti Rasamrita Srindu 1.2.2 Sri Chaitanya Chaitramit Madhya Lila 22.105 The Nectar of Devotion Chapter 2, 6 Paragraph. All right, thank you. So, transcendental devotional service by which we get love of Krishna. Its first point is it's executed by the senses. So we use our senses for the activities of sadhana bhakti. Such devotion, such devotion eternally exists within the heart. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. So how does it awaken? Generally, awakening done by hearing. There's a verse in the Chaitanya Charitamrita which describes Nitya Siddha Krishna Prima Sadhya Kabunai Shravanada Sudhachite Korehi Udai. The verse is saying that love of Krishna is eternally in the heart of all living entities. It is not something to be gained from some other source. It eternally exists within the heart, but it has to be awakened by hearing. So the hearing process is very important. Lord Chaitanya gave a lot of importance to the hearing process. People need to hear about devotional service. All right, so two types of sadhana bhakti, vaidhi sadhana bhakti. Someone read? Milin, read. The first, uh, why the sadhana bhakti? The first part, part is called service according to regulative principles. One has to follow this different regulative principles by the order of the special master or on the strength of authoritative scriptures. Keep reading. Raganuga sadhana bhakti. Another part of sadhana bhakti is called Raganuga. Raganuga refers to the point at which, by following the regulative principles, 
one becomes a little more attached to Krishna and executes devotional service out of nature love. Yes, right. So two kinds of bhakti, vaidhi sadhana. First of all, follow the different regulative principles by the order of the guru or the, the scriptures. But to, we can go a little further, you become a little more ad, attached to Krishna. If one becomes a little more attached to Krishna, he will execute devotional service out of natural love. He follows the regulative principles, but he's a, a little more attached to Krishna and he's doing it out of love, natural love. So we're going ahead, lesson six, the independent nature of pure devotional service. All right. Somebody read the title for that. What's the title here? Each of these three stages of Uttama Bhakti is characterized by a particular type of happiness. Okay, so each of these three are Uttama Bhakti. Uta, what does Uttama Bhakti mean? Sitala? Uttama Bhakti? Pure, pure devotional service. Uttama Bhakti means the highest, the top. First class oh. devotional service. Huh? First class devotional service. Yeah, the top, right. There's, there's Kanista, Madhyam and Uttama, right? Uttama is at the top. So Kanista, Madhyam, Kanista and Madhyam can also be pure devotees, but Uttama is the highest. All right, so sta different stages of devotional service. There's three different stages of doing bhakti. Sadhana bhakti, Bhava Bhakti and Prima Bhakti. Now they could all be pure devotees. They can all be pure devotees. So there are different kinds of happiness in each kind of devotional service. We see that di there's different happiness which you get in Sadhana Bhakti. It's different from the happiness which you get in Bhava Bhakti. And that's going to be different from what you get in Prema Bhakti. So they're described. The happiness in Sadhana Bhakti is Shubhada. It's higher than the happiness we get from sense gratification or from liberation. So you get some happiness. You, you do get nice happiness in, Bhav, in Sadhana Bhakti. It's much better than sense gratification or even liberation. But you get a higher happiness in Bhava Bhakti. The happiness in Bhava Bhakti is called Moksha Laguta Krit. And it is so superior that it makes sense gratification and even liberation seem insignificant. But then the highest happiness is in Prema Bhakti, which is called Sandrananda Vishesh Atma. And it is described, it is so incalculably superior that one cannot even perceive the existence of sense gratification or liberation. So you can see different levels of happiness there, according to the type of bhakti, the stage of bhakti which you're doing. Now it's all pure devotional service, but different stages. Some devotees do devotional service at the stage of sadhana, and some are at the stage of bhava, and some are at the stage of prema. Recording in progress. All right, so three different kinds of happiness. All right, then going to speak about now the eligibility for Vaidhi Bhakti. I mean, who's qualified to do Vaidhi Bhakti? If somehow or other, by good fortune, one develops faith in hearing 
and chanting my glories. Such a person, being neither very disgusted with nor attached to material life, should achieve perfection through the path of loving devotion to me. So we heard, I think it was Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu was telling us that the qualification for Vaidhi Bhakti shouldn't be too much attached to the material world and shouldn't be too much disgusted with material world. And at the same time you have to have faith in hearing and chanting about Krishna. So that in that way, then he's a good qualification, to, he's, a good, he's, he's eligible to take up Vaidhi Bhakti, to begin following Vaidhi Bhakti, all the rules and regulations. The person who has developed faith in serving the Lord by impressions arising from previous association with devotees, who is not too attached to material objects and who is not too detached is qualified for Vaidhi Bhakti. So that's similar, right? The two statements are similar. Yeah, it's the same thing. Oh no, a little different. So this is one is one is a statement from oh one is Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is from Srimad Bhagavatam also. One two fifteen. Oh, oh one is one two fifteen, one is one two fourteen. Very similar. All right. Elig anyway, the eligibility for beginning devotional service. Qualified for Vaidhi Beginning devotional service means we do Vaidhi Bhakti. So what are the three qualifications necessary for Vaidhi Bhakti? One is we need the mercy of a devotee. Because by the mercy of a devotee, then we will have faith, we will have a taste for hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. You won't have that faith, you won't have that taste without the mercy of a devotee. The mercy of a devotee is very important. Now we may have had mercy, it may be from a previous life, it may not even be from this life, but somewhere there must have been some mercy of a devotee and that allows us to have faith in the process of chanting. And then, not overly attached to material life, not too disgusted with material life. So these are the three qualifications. I think that's quite clear for all of you. Attraction for Krishna. We want to develop our attraction for Krishna or faith in hearing and chanting about Krishna. And how do we get that? How do we get this attraction for Krishna or how do we get that faith? It comes from the word in Sanskrit, yadrich jaya, that is good fortune. Good fortune, good means mercy, like that comes by good fortune or good luck and that comes from, that good fortune comes from merciful association with great devotees. You get the opportunity to associate with great devotees. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, can you hear me? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes. 
Okay, so we were, we were speaking about the allergy. So it was mentioned, association of devotees is so powerful that sometimes are they may be extremely renounced. They may become devotees. If you get very powerful association. Okay? Yeah? Hare Krishna? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. Yes, yes Maharaj. Perfectly clear. Okay. It's still unstable. Okay. Let's see. So, eligibility for Vaidhi Bhakti. There are different, we were speaking about doing pious activities, that some good fortune, you may get the good fortune to come to Krishna consciousness. So that good fortune may be that you did some piety, you did some pious activities, you did something which qualified you for Vaidhi Bhakti. So we should understand there are different kinds of pious activities. First of all, there is Bhajan Mukhi Sukriti. Bhajan Mukhi Sukriti means it bestows material opulence. You do some pious activity and the result is you will get something in return. You will get some material reward. Maybe you did, you, you give some charity for a hospital or for a school or something, maybe for the old people's home. So you get some material opulence. You can get, you know, you give charity, it will come back equal amount, maybe more. That's material charity. You give to an ordinary person or for something mundane, it will at least come back an equal amount and maybe more. But then there's another kind of pious activity which is called Mokshon Mukhi Sukriti. And that enables the living entity to merge into the existence of the Supreme. If you give charity for a Mayavadi group, if you give charity to some impersonalists, then the result is they may bless you that you get impersonal liberation. And that means you would merge into the existence of the Supreme. Just like a devotee, we will bless someone. If somebody gives charity to, for the Krishna consciousness movement, we will bless them. May you always be in Krishna consciousness. So similarly, the Mayavadis, the impersonalists, they will bless people. May you become Narayan. May you become one with the impersonal Brahman. So you have to be careful who you give charity to and where you give. So the best charity is Bhakti on Mukhi Sukriti and that is to give for the devotees. And that awakens one's dormant Krishna consciousness. If we give charity for the Krishna consciousness movement, that's the best charity. From the Chaitanya Charitamrita it is stated the good fortune of bhakti on muki is attainable only when one comes in contact with a devotee. You have to have contact with a devotee to be able to do this kind of sukriti. Without the contact with a devotee, we won't be able to get that kind of mercy, that kind of opportunity. So, very important to get the association of devotees. Prabhu, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Um, I was wondering, so in terms of the charity, what if you give a beggar, uh, let's say, fruits and vegetables, not prasad, but rather fruits and vegetables, uh, what, what does that equal to? Well, you give him fruits and vegetables, it's a material pious activity. It will it will reward you some material opulence. All right. Maybe somebody will come and give you a lot, a lot of fruits and vegetables. Maybe you'll get more fruits and vegetables given to you. <laughs> may, it may, may not be in this life. It may, may have to wait till the next life. I don't know. But 
you know, you, you get back what you, what you give, it comes back. At least it will come back an equal amount and come back probably more. But you give to a beggar, this charity, material charity, mundane charity. So it will give you some material benefit. Okay, Prabhu? Yes, thank you. All right, please read someone. Who's not? Who's reading? Who's going to read? Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, can you read? Uh, eligibility of the candidate for advancing in devotional service. Spiritual advancement is eternal. The attraction to Krishna gained from previous advancement in devotional service remains in one's heart. In a future life, it impels one to seek the association of devotees and take up the practice from where one left off. Thus, we can see devotees coming to the Krishna consciousness movement who begin at different levels of advancement. Waves of Devotion, page 52. Thank you, Prabhu. Yes, uh, so spiritual advancement is eternal. We don't lose whatever advancement we have made. Prabhupada said, if we do 1% of devotional service in this life, then we'll begin from that point in our next life. But whatever advancement we've made, that's eternally to our credit. And therefore, it's written here that devotees coming to the Krishna consciousness movement, they, they come at different levels. And some, some people, when they come to Krishna consciousness, they're already very advanced. Everything is just so natural for them and it's so simple and easy for them because they were already devotees in their previous life and they're coming to continue their Krishna consciousness. But for other people, sometimes the beginning is very difficult. Things are really, really difficult and they struggle with everything and it's so difficult. So we see diff it's different for different people. Even though they may be in the movement for the same time, somebody can be already very advanced and somebody's just, you know, really having a difficult time. It's our previous lives, that somebody had contact maybe with devotees in the previous life, but they didn't become perfect. They didn't, they didn't really go very far. So they take birth again and then they come to Krishna consciousness and they remember the previous life that they had, you know, and it's so natural for them and it's so much easier. Is that understood, everyone? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. All right. So this, we're talking now about the eligibility of the candidate for advancing in devotional service. To advance in devotion, not just to begin, but to advance in devotional service. So it's stated here from the Waves of Devotion, the impetus for Vaidhi Bhakti is scriptural injunction. Therefore, in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the depth of one's faith in and knowledge of the scriptures determines one's eligibility to advance and places him in one of three classes of candidates. All right? So, it's explained here that the depth of one's faith in and knowledge of the scriptures we may have, we may have, somebody may have a lot of faith, but not much knowledge. And somebody may have knowledge, but no faith in the scriptures. So we should have both faith and knowledge, that's the best. And that, that will help us to advance. And there, it will place us in one of three classes of candidates. There are three classes of candidates. You can see the first one. Kanista Adhikari. 
Kanista means the junior or the 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 younger youngest. Right? So Kanista Adhikari. Sometimes it means materialistic devotee. So come someone's a Kanista. It means he doesn't he does not have much faith and he doesn't have much knowledge of the scriptures. So he's weak. He's weak in faith and weak in knowledge. So he may have difficulty. Now somebody else is a Madhyama Adhikari. Madhyama means intermediate. Kanista is a junior, Madhyama is intermediate. And the intermediate Adhikari, he may have, he may have, so he has intermediate faith and intermediate knowledge. He has some knowledge, he doesn't have complete knowledge, but he has some knowledge. And he has faith. It may not be a hundred percent, but he has quite good faith. So he's a Madhyama. Kanista is weak. Madhyama is in the middle. And on the top, you have the Uttama Adhikari. Uttama, the best devotee. And the best devotee, he will have strong faith and strong knowledge, full knowledge of the scriptures. All right? So if somebody has weak faith and weak knowledge, then what happens is he may meet he may meet someone, he may meet an old friend, and he may tell his friend, you know, yes, I'm I'm a devotee of Krishna. I'm practicing Krishna consciousness now. I'm a vegetarian. And his friend says, Oh, oh no, really? Oh, you're, you're a vegetarian? Oh, you're with Hare Krishna now? Oh, that's not very... Oh, no, no, you shouldn't be with them. I tell you, don't go to them. Don't be a vegetarian, you know. You don't need to... Be. He will come up and he will discourage you. And you have weak faith and you don't have much knowledge. So you cannot, you cannot answer him. You cannot deal with him. So, because you're weak, he will try to influence you. He will say, oh, don't stay with Hare Krishna, you come with me. Leave this Hare Krishna, put down that bead bag, just come with me. And he takes you away and doesn't want you to go to the temple anymore, and doesn't want you to be a devotee. So that can happen to Kanista, because he, he's weak. He doesn't know much and he doesn't have much faith. And the Madhyama, however, Madhyama has good faith, but he doesn't have much knowledge. His faith is quite good, but he doesn't have much, enough knowledge. And somebody comes and he's not able to convince the person, but he doesn't get discouraged and he doesn't give up. He doesn't, he doesn't go away from Krishna consciousness. The Madhyama devotee is actually the best, it's a preacher. But the Uttama, one who is Uttama, he will have full faith and full knowledge. And somebody comes to him and then the Uttama devotee, he will argue with them and he will convince him that vegetarian is the best. And he will convince the other people that chanting Hare Krishna is the right thing to do. And he will convince the people to come and join Hare Krishna and become a devotee. Because his Uttama is very powerful. And he can change the mind. He can convince other people. Is it clear? Three different levels of devotees? Yes, Maharaj. All right. Here, you can see. Weak faith. Easily, easily swayed. Means easily taken away from Krishna consciousness. He's not very strong, not strong in Krishna consciousness. So, weak knowledge cannot offer arguments to opposing opinion. So he cannot defeat anybody, he cannot convince anyone. <coughs> and somebody comes, they may convince him to give up Krishna consciousness. <laughs> He's so weak. But the Madhyama, he has strong faith and he's convinced. He has good knowledge, 
but still he can't, he, he cannot always defeat the opposing opinion. He has knowledge, but he's not always able to defeat them. But on the Uttama, on the Uttama platform, strong faith convinced and can convince others. Strong knowledge and can defeat the opposing opinion. So we want to try to come on this, in this kind of study about faith and knowledge, we want to try to become Uttama. At least we should come to the Madhyam and then go on and try to become Uttama, that we can defeat others also. So here's the famous verse from the Bhagavad Gita, which you've studied. All of you, you know this verse, right? Because you've studied the Bhagavad Gita. So this is the process to approach the spiritual master. Right? From the purport, one has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge. Such a spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender, and one should serve the spiritual master like a menial servant without false prestige. So that's uh, one way in which we can advance in devotional service, right? From Bhagavad Gita, fourth chapter, text number 34. A very important verse and often quoted. Right? Do you know this verse, Sitala? Ah, uh, yes, Maharaj. Say it. Let me hear you say it. Translation? The, the tra Sanskrit. Sanskrit, okay. Tadviti prani yeah, good. Translation? Translation, just try to learn the just by approach uh, is a spiritual must include from him supreme uh, I don't know this word and later service unto him the suffering realize the source can impart knowledge unto you become because they have seen the truth okay yes <laughs> okay and here's a, here's a statement from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, from his book. <laughs> o best of kings, if you desire to acquire the extraordinary knowledge by which the supreme goal is realized, then chant the name of Lord Govinda, Krishna, with love and devotion. Right? So you want, you want to advance? Chant the name of Govinda or Krishna with love and devotion. Faith. Faith means conviction that the goal of life is to please Krishna and abandon all other desires. This is the meaning of faith. We have, that means we're fully convinced we have to please Krishna. And we give up all material desires. That is strong faith. From the Bhagavad Gita, we see in the Bhagavad Gita uh, this statement Sarvamitadritam manye yamam vadisikeshava. O oh Krishna, I totally accept this truth. All that you have told me from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 10. Verse number 14, right? Arjuna had heard the Chatur Sloki from Lord Krishna and after hearing Lord Krishna speak the Chatur Sloki, then Arjuna said like that, I totally accept this truth, all you have told me 
That's complete faith, right? Strong faith. We want to have that kind of faith. And here's another statement about faith. Shraddha, shraddha. That shraddha, that is faith. And it's a word in Sanskrit for faith. Shraddha shabdi. Vishwasha kahi sudridanis chaya. Krishna bhakti kaila sarva kama kritahaya. Right? Shraddha is confident, firm faith that by rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. Such faith is favorable to the discharge of devotional service. Try to understand this statement here from the Chaitanya Charitamrita Majjhila 2262. Very powerful definition of faith. Confident, firm faith. That simply by serving Krishna, we're doing everything. Don't think anything is lacking. I don't think, oh, I didn't do that, oh, I didn't do this. We're doing service to Krishna. Service to Krishna includes everything. It means everyone is being served when we're serving Krishna. So that is the highest faith. We should have that kind of faith. Then we can serve Krishna very nicely. All right. Uh, Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, can you read? My dear Lord, I repeatedly pray unto your lotus feet that I may simply be stronger in devotional service. I simply pray that my Krishna consciousness may be more strong and steady because happiness derived out of Krishna consciousness and devotional service is so powerful that with it, one can have all the other perfections of religiousness. Economic development, sense, grat sense gratification, and even the attainment of liberation from material existence. Prahlad Maharaj to Narasimha Dev, taken from Hari Bhakta Sudhodaya, the nectar of devotion, happiness in Krishna consciousness, 12th paragraph. <laughs> All right, so what is Prahlad Maharaj asking Lord Nisringadev for? He said, I simply want to be stronger in devotional service. I want to be more strong and steady. Why? Because he knows that happiness out of Krishna consciousness and devotional service is so powerful that you can have everything from it. There's nothing else lacking. You're not missing anything. If we become Krishna conscious, then we're not going to be missing anything. Everything is there in Krishna consciousness. So don't think you're, you're missing out or I'm losing something. Everything is there in Krishna consciousness. Is that Dutch girl here today? What's her name? All right, Maharaj, would you like to read for us today something? Eligibility of the candidate for advancing in devotional service, neophyte devotee, Kanishta Adhikari. Eligibility, one whose faith is not very strong, who is just beginning, should be considered a neophyte devotee. All right. Madhya 2270, Bhakti Rasamasindu 1.2.19, Nectar Devotion, Chapter 3, 5th Paragraph. Thank you. So the Kanista devotee, Kanista meaning junior devotee, faith is not very strong, just beginning. So he's considered neophyte, neophyte meaning new devotee, Kanista. So naturally, coming from the material world. Of course, some people may have, not that every new, every new devotee will be like that. We said, some people come to Krishna consciousness and, and you know, they're very strong, have very strong faith in their, because somehow they had contact from maybe previous life. Some people, were be, they've been devotees before and they go away for some time and then they come back. And they come back after some years 
and they already know everything and they never they never forgot anything they just went up, they went away from krishna consciousness but they come back and when they come back they go on from where they left off you know there were some devotees in prabhupada's time they were doing a lot of service and they were very active but somehow they go away you know they go off and maybe they get married or something and that, you know, and then they come back and become a devotee after a lot of years. And it's so easy, it's so natural for them. They're already very advanced. So, some people, they're just neophytes, new people. Other people, intermediate devotees. Sanjya, can you keep reading? This is Maharaj. Intermediate devotee, Matiyam Adhikari. Eligibility, he who does not know scriptural arguments very well, but who has firm faith, is called an intermediate or second-class devotee. Alright. Yes. So the intermediate devotee, he, he doesn't know the scriptures very well yet, but he has firm faith, he knows what he's doing is the right thing, he's convinced. But he still, he, he hasn't learned all the scriptures yet, so he's not able to convince people so easily. All right, and then we have the topmost devotee, Sanjay. Topmost devotee, Uttam Adhikari. Eligibility, one who is expert in logic and in understanding the revealed scriptures and who always has firm conviction and deep faith that is not blind is to be considered a topmost devotee in devotional service. Next of devotion, chapter 3, third paragraph. Thank you very much. So topmost devotee, firmly convinced, deep faith. He knows the scriptures and he's able to convince others. He's expert in logic and so on. So he's the topmost devotee, he can argue with others and convince them. So, Sanjya Mari, Mari. How to increase taste for studying Prabhupada's books? So, practice means employing both the mind and the senses in practical devotional service. This practice is not something artificial. For example, a child learns or practice to walk. This walking is not unnatural. The, walk, the walking capacity is there originally in the child, and simply by, the, by a little practice, he walks very nicely. Similarly, devotional service to the Supreme Lord is the natural instinct of every living entity. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 2, Fifth Paragraph. Yes, if we study Prabhupada's books regularly, it will certainly help us. It will give us a the good knowledge and when, when people come and challenge us, we can defeat their arguments, we can use the examples which Prabhupada gives us. And it will also increase our faith, that as our knowledge increases, we'll have more faith in Krishna consciousness. And so this is important for us to develop a taste for studying Prabhupada's books. Not just only reading them, but discussing them and explaining them to people is even better than just reading them. If you can get a group of people together and discuss them and explain them to each other, talk about the, then it's very nice. Yes, Sanjya? The holy name, correct, character, pastime and activities of Krishna are all transcendentally sweet like sugar candy. Although the tongue of one afflicted by the jaundice of avidya ignorance cannot taste anything sweet, it is wonderful that simply by carefully chanting these sweet names every day, a natural relish awakens within, within his tongue, and his disease is gradually destroyed at the root. Purport, attacked by jaundice, the tongue of deceased person cannot palatably relish sugar candy, Rather, a person with jaundice considers something sweet to taste very bitter. Mm -hmm. So this is from the Nectar of Instruction. Have you studied the Nectar of Instruction yet? 
Have you done it in the Bhakti Shastri yet? No, 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 no marriage. No, okay. You finished the Bhagavad Gita though. Yeah. Okay, so you still have the nectar of instruction to do. Yeah, go ahead, Sanjaya. Um, avidya, ignorance, similarly perverts the ability to relish the transcendentally palatable name, quality, form, and end of form and of Krishna. Despite this disease, if one with great care and attention takes to Krishna consciousness, chanting the holy name and hearing Krishna's transcendental pastimes, his ignorance will be destroyed, and his tongue enabled to taste the sweetness of transcendental nature of Krishna and his paraphernalia. Such a recovery of spiritual health is possible only by the regular cultivation of Krishna consciousness. The Nectar of Instruction, text 7. Thank you. Very nice. Your English is very good. Huh? Eng are you educated in English or was it Dutch you were educated? Both, huh? Dutch, um, Dutch people Dutch, are... But we, we study, we have to study English as well. Yeah, your English is very good. Thank you, Maharaj. So that's Nectar of Instruction, text 7. Okay. Uh, we want to study Prabhupada's books, develop a taste for reading, hearing Prabhupada's books. In the beginning, people say, oh, I fall asleep, oh, I fall asleep. <laughs> So stand up, <laughs> read aloud. Some devotees, they encourage to read aloud. Don't just read silently, but read out loud. And if you read with others, that can also sometimes help. And, but I say not just reading, but to discuss, to discuss. Some devotees, there are some devotees, they make a vow to read a, a fixed number of pages every day. I think if you read 40 pages a day, then you can read the whole Srimad Bhagavatam in one year. So, if you haven't read the, the whole Srimad Bhagavatam, you can do it like that. You can make a vow to read every day 40 pages, and then you'll finish in one year. Here's the Nectar of Instruction. It's a small book, not a very big book. You can read it quickly, but it's very important. Very important book. So Rupa Goswami compares the, the fact that we have no taste for reading and we have no taste for chanting. He compares it to the disease, jaundice. Have you had jaundice before? Anybody? Did you have jaundice? I had it. I know when I first came to India, when I first came to India, I came in the very hot season. It was like April, May, and it was really hot. And I was coming from England, and it was so hot, you know. And it, it was 1970s, and uh, there was not much water. There was no bottles of water. You, you couldn't buy mineral water anywhere. And so I think somehow I drank some water, which was not very pure, and I got jaundice. And, oh, it's terrible, you know, I was so weak. So I went to the doctor, and the doctor said, no, there's no medicine, you just have to rest. But then another man came, the other man came, and he told me, he said, oh, you should drink sugar cane. And I was thinking, oh, that would be very nice, I like sugar cane juice. But when he brought me some sugar cane juice to drink, it tasted terrible. I couldn't, could hardly drink it, it was like drinking some engine oil or something was just horrible. But he said, this is because you're sick, because you have jaundice, you cannot taste the sweetness. But he said, you have to keep drinking it and gradually you'll get better. And it was true, I kept drinking it and gradually it got better. So reading Prabhupada's books is compared like that. that you, in the beginning we don't have a taste, but if you keep reading, and you keep reading, then gradually you get more and more taste and you will begin to relish the wonderful information which is there within the books. So it's very good for our spiritual health. So here's a nice verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, second canto, uh, first canto, second chapter. Sushrusho Shraddhanashya Vasudeva Kataruchi 
Shanmahatevaya Vibra Punya Tirta Nishevanat. O twice born sages, by serving those devotees who are completely freed from all vice, great service is done. By such service one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudev. Right? We see, because Sitala Mataji, Sitala Mataji is always serving devotees. There's always sannyasis and different leaders and senior devotees coming to her house and she's always serving them and cooking for them and giving them nice prasadam and taking care of them. So by her service to the devotees, she's got a taste for hearing the message of Vasudev. And that's why she's taking the Bhakti Shastri course now. Because they, she got the mercy from all those sub devotees she'd been serving. Right? Right, Sitala? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, good. Yes. All right. Uh, now, is that other devotee here? Is it back to Elias? Or maybe we, we have also uh, um, Bhakti Bhaktavasala Nasringa Prabhu. He's there, right? I am here. Yeah, you can read. Yeah. How to increase taste for studying Prabhupada's books. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.17 Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is the Paramatma, super soul, in everyone's heart, and the benefactor of truthful devotee, cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee, who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. Okay, that was the verse I just read, right? Go ahead, keep reading. Text 18. By regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service under the personality of God, who is praised through transcendental songs, is established as irrevocable as an irrevocable fact. Who knows this verse? Is it um, Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu? Yes, right. Go ahead. Say it, say it Maharaji. Nashta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki. Yes, right. Everybody knows that verse, right? Should do. Yes. Go ahead, Prabhu. X19. As soon as irrevocable loving service is established in the heart, the effects of nature's modes of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire, and hankering, disappear from the heart. Then the devotee is established in goodness, and he becomes completely happy. Yes. Do you know that verse also, Maharaji? Tadara Jastamo Bhava. No, my Prabhu Maharaj, yeah, no. I don't know that okay. by heart. Okay, go ahead, Bhakta Vatsal Prabhu, 20. Text 20. Thus established in the mode of unalloyed goodness, the man whose mind has been enlivened by contact with devotional service to the Lord gains positive scientific knowledge of the personality of Godhead in the stage of liberation from all material association. Mm. Right, so this is describing the stages of... Krishna Consciousness. In the beginning, text 17, it was describing that you just serve the devotees and then you get an urge to hear the message. And then text 18, you hear regularly and yet the same, you're also serving the devotees. And the result is your heart becomes purified. And you start to awaken Krishna Consciousness, becomes established in the heart. Text 19 describes, you get rid of passion and ignorance. You get rid of the lust and the desire. It's gone from the heart. You're fully established in goodness. And then text 20 describes, you're, you're established in goodness. You become enlivened by devotional service. You get liberation from material association. And you come to know Krishna, the personality of Godhead. So you can see a progression through these verses, different stages of devotional service. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we'll go ahead. I think you all know this from the Bhagavad Gita. Sitala, Chen. Chadu Veda Sukriti Narjuna Ato Jigyan Surata Ting Gyani Chavaraka Sabha. Translation O best among the Bharatas, how can of first men begin to render devotional service unto me the distress the desires of winters with wealth best the increase and he who is searching for searching for knowledge of the Absolute. 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 Yes. Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 16. Yes, right. So, four kinds of people. Pious, but without faith in the objective. The goal of life is to please Krishna and abandon all other desires. Right? That's the goal of life. So, different examples. Distress. Who's the example? We see the elephant in the picture. Gajendra. Gajendra, the great elephant, been fighting with the crocodile. So Gajendra was in great distress, he was greatly troubled, he was in so much distress because they were fighting for a long time and the crocodile was at home in the water and the elephant was becoming weaker and weaker and the crocodile wouldn't let go of the foot of the elephant. Then, then, the, croc then the elephant prayed to Krishna and Krishna came. Oh, well, Krishna, Vishnu came on the back of the of, of uh, Garuda, and he killed the crocodile, and Gajendra was saved. So Gajendra is the example of one in distress. Then Jignasu, Jignasu means curious. The sages in the Naimisharanya forest, they were Jignasu. They were curious. They had many questions. They wanted to know. Who is, who is the Lord? And they wanted to know, now that Lord Krishna has gone from the world, where are the religious principles to be found? So the sages at Naimasharanya, they were very curious. They're the example of people who were curious and they came to Krishna consciousness. And then, Arta Arti means material, they want wealth. They look, somebody's looking for some kind of wealth and that was Dhruva Maharaj's situation. Dhruva Maharaj wanted to get a kingdom greater than his father, and greater than his grandfather even. He wanted a wonderful big kingdom and he was only a young boy and he went to the forest to do austerities and he, he got it. So he's the example of someone who had material desire and then the jnani, who, those people who came to Krishna consciousness in search of knowledge, the example is the four Kumaras. The four Kumaras, they were fixed on the platform of impersonal Brahman, but they went to the spiritual world. And when they went to the spiritual world, then they were able to see the Supreme Lord and they became attracted to devotional service. So these are examples of each of the four kinds of, four reasons of pious people. They're all pious because they have come to Krishna consciousness. So they all have Sukriti. They have Sukriti, but they don't have much faith in the objective. 
In the beginning, they didn't have much faith. They just came with their material desires. Of course, they did become purified and then they developed faith, but initially they didn't have any faith. All right. Somebody like to read this one for us? This is about levels of advancement in devotional. Is that back to Elias there? Yes. Levels of advancement in devotional service. We just discussed the likability or qualification of advancement in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti Adhikari Adhikara. Now we will discuss the level of advancement among devotees. Both classifications are divided into three, and these three divisions are named Kanishta, Madhya, and Uttam. Yes, keep going. Uh, also, technically, these two classifications speak about different things. Srila Prabhupada, with the exception of the following purpose, equates the two in his teachings. Ashivaram Swami in Sudha Bhakti, Chintamani, page 207. Yes, right. So, Ashivaram Swami is a senior, very senior devotee in the Krishna Consciousness Movement, senior disciple of Srila Prabhupada, and he has written about devotional service, and he's describing the qualification for advancing in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. So, uh, different levels of advancement among devotees, right? We said some people are Kanista, some are Madhyam, and some are Uttama. So, both classifications are divided into three. Both classifications, classifications means speaking about different things. In one place they're speaking about knowledge and another place they're speaking about faith. Right? So somebody may have a lot of faith, may not have knowledge. Somebody may have a lot of knowledge, may not have faith. And they may, you know, they may be uttama in terms of knowledge or they may be uttama in terms of faith, but they may lack the other qualification. So, two classifications. All right, can you keep reading, Prabhu? Uh, levels of Atmatya. Ratiprima Taratam Yevakta Taratama. A devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. Oh, oh, just a minute. Okay, a devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. So this is a different qualification. Previously we were speaking about knowledge and faith, but now we're speaking about attachment and love. Some people, you know, they can also be very advanced in terms of their attachment and love. We don't know about their knowledge and faith, but they have very strong attachment and love for Krishna. So some people are uttama, they may be, that's superlative, right? There's positive, comparative and superlative, right? That's a superior, somebody's superior and somebody's the superlative, that's the topmost in terms of their attachment and love for Krishna. Yeah, go ahead, Prabhu. Purport. Shilina Bhaktivinoda Dathakur has started that if one has developed faith in Krishna consciousness, he is to be considered a liable candidate for future advancement in Krishna consciousness. Those who have faith are divided into three categories, Uttama, Madhyam and Kanishta. Yes, right. So, Bhaktivinoda Thakur if, has... If we have developed faith in Krishna consciousness, then it's good to make, you'll be able to make advancement in Krishna consciousness. If you have faith, then it will be good to, it will, it will not be difficult to advance. So those who have faith, three categories, Uttama, 
Madhyam Kanista. Right? Kanista will be weak faith, Madhyam will be intermediate faith, and Uttama the topmost faith. Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. The standard of devotion is also categorized in the same way. In neophyte. A neophyte believes that one that only love of Krishna or Krishna consciousness is very good, but he may not know the basis of pure Krishna consciousness or how one can become a perfect devotee. The devotees are described as positive, comparative and superlative in terms of their love and attachment for Krishna. Okay. All right, so devotion is the standard of devotion. In other words, the standard, the, the distinction between the advanced and the neophyte and the new devotee is understood the same way. So the neophyte devotee, he thinks that love of Krishna or Krishna consciousness is very good, but he may not know the basis of pure Krishna consciousness or how one can become a perfect devotee. <laughs> and somehow he has, he has love of Krishna. He believes love of Krishna is very good, but he doesn't know about how to develop his Krishna consciousness. He doesn't know how to become a good devotee. So devotees are described positive, comparative and superlative. Positive means like neophyte, comparative, madhyam and superlative, uttama, in terms of their love and attachment for Krishna. So different devotees will have different degrees of love and attachment for Krishna. Yeah? Go ahead Prabhu. The following Bhagavatam Shlokas described attitudes and vision of Vaishnavas on each level of devotional advancement. Okay, yeah. So we'll see some slokas from the Bhagavatam. Right. Okay, um, who is not read yet today? Sudarshan Prabhu, you can read. Okay. Mm. A, a Prakrita Bhakta or materialistic devotee does not purposefully study the Shastra and try to understand the actual stand, uh, standard of pure devotional service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow the regulative principles learned from his spiritual master or from his family who worships the deity. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in devotional service. Okay. So we're looking at different levels of advancement in devotional service. Different levels of advancement. Kanista Bhagavata's attributes and vision. Kanista Bhagavata's attributes and vision. Attributes means what he has, what qualifications he possesses and the vision, how he sees everything. So this is for the Kanista, this means for the neophyte or the junior devotee. So he's described here, the other words are used to describe Kanista, they call him a Prakrita Bhakta. Prakrita Bhakta means also Kanista, it means neophyte, it means also materialistic devotee. A materialistic devotee, he doesn't purposely study the scriptures, right? He, he may look at the books, but he doesn't try to really study them. And he doesn't try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. No, he's a new devotee, he's neophyte, you know, maybe in the beginning, maybe not very serious about Krishna consciousness. Maybe in the beginning they, they like prasadam, they just come because they like prasadam. And some people come because they like the girls, they think, oh, the girls there in Krishna, you know, they're really nice, you know, I think maybe I could find a nice girlfriend there. And they come to Krishna consciousness. So there's different reasons why people become devotees. Of course, sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes it's the girls come because they like the men. Different reasons. 
But anyway, you know, they're, they're, they're materialistic devotees. Their motive was not just simply for devotional service. They had some kind of material desire. So the devotee is described here, the neophyte devotee. He, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. No, he thinks, well, who, you know, who's he? He's just an ordinary person. He's just like me. He's no different from me. So he thinks like that. But he may follow the regulative principles. He follows the, he should follow the regulative principles. He's learned, he's from the spiritual master, or maybe from his family who worships a deity. Many people come to Krishna consciousness, they come from a Hindu family, and the family may worship the deity in their own home, and they become devotees, and they take initiation. But they still may be neophyte. They still may be very attached to material life. So he is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in devotional service. All right, is this clear to everyone? Any questions? No? Okay. Different levels of advancement. We're hearing about the Kanista's vision. Yeah, here's a bit more about Sudarshan Prabhu. Such a person is a Bhakta Praya neophyte devotee or Bhakta Bhakta Bhasha. For he is a little enlightened by Vaishnava philosophy. Such a person is a new Bhakta Praya neophyte devotee or bhakta bhasha or he is a little enlightened by Vaishnava philosophy. Right, so bhakta praya or bhakta abhasa. A shadow of a devotee, right? He's a shadow of a devotee or he's, he's close to being a devotee, he's dear to a devotee. Neophyte, bhakta praya. A little, and he has a little enlightened about Vaishnava philosophy, not much, a little bit he knows. And so he's Kanista, neophyte devotee. But the Madhyam devotee is a bit different, right? Madhya, Madhyama Bhagavata attributes and expands vision. An intermediate second class devotee shows love for some supreme personality of Godhead, is friendly to all devotee, is very merciful to neophytes and, and ignorant and neglects, neglects those who are envious of devotional service. Mm -hmm. So these qualities of the Madhyama devotee should be noted. The intermediate devotee is described here, second class devotee. Right? Kanista devotee, that would be like third class devotee. And Uttama devotee, that's the first class devotee. So the intermediate devotee, second class, he, he has love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He will love the deity, he will love Krishna, always very respectful and talking about Krishna and glorifying Krishna. At the same time, he's friendly to all the devotees. He makes friends with the devotees. And he's very merciful. He gives a lot of mercy to new people and to neophytes and even ignorant people. Even ignorant people who, if they're coming and inquiring, he will be merciful to them and try to help them to come to Krishna consciousness. So he will give mercy like that. But he will neglect those who are envious of devotees. If somebody, if people are envious of devotees and they, they, criticize, they blaspheme the devotees, maybe even they're offensive to devotees, so we will neglect these people, go away from them, keep away from them. Don't try to argue with them. Because if you argue with them, they'll just get more angry and will become very bitter, and, you know, and the, the person will commit more and more, and more offences. You don't want that. 
So better to just stay away from them and avoid these kind of people. So we have to be able to make this distinction between who is a neophyte, who is ignorant and who is an envious person. You have to be careful. If you know someone is very envious and very blasphemous, better to stay away from them. Don't try to change them because it will be very difficult. All right? Well, go ahead. Now, the Uttama devotees, his attributes and most expansive vision. The most advanced devotee sees within everything the soul of, uh, so the soul of all souls, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Consequently, he sees systematically everything in relation to the Supreme Lord and understands that everything that exists is eternally situated with the Lord, within the Lord. Yes. So the most advanced devotee, the Uttama devotee, the first class devotee, he sees within everything the soul of all souls, Krishna. Right? Krishna said, Sarvashyacham Ridisani Visto. I am in the hearts of all living entities. So Krishna is within the hearts of all living entities. And not only that, he's within the atom, he's everywhere in his impersonal, unmanifested feature. So the topmost devotee sees everything in relation to the Supreme Lord and understands that everything is situated eternally within the Lord. A devotee asked Prabhupada, he said, what does it mean? Does it mean you actually see Krishna? Do you see Krishna playing the flute everywhere? What does it mean? A Prabhupada gave an example. He explained, he said, just like when the mother sees her daughter's shoes, then the mother will think, oh, this is my daughter's shoes, and she will think of her daughter. And so the same way, when the devotee sees a tree and sees a flower, he will think, oh, Krishna's tree, Krishna's flower, we should offer it to Krishna. So that this way, the devotee sees everything in relation to Krishna. Just like the mother sees her child's clothes or her, her child's shoes. So the same way the devotee sees Krishna everywhere. We, we see everything as Krishna's energy, the property of Krishna. Is it clear? Yes. yes okay. What is the qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere? Who knows? What is the qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere? Sanjya Mataji, do you know? Sanjya, are you there? Hare Krishna. Sabodamai Mataji, do you know? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, is it that uh, we need to have uh, faith and love and attraction to Krishna? Yes, right. Yeah, especially we have to have love, right? There's a famous verse where Prabhupada quotes the Brahma Samhita. This verse. Yes, right. Prabhupada said there's only one qualification for seeing God. And then he quotes this verse. When your eyes are anointed with the love of Krishna, then you will see Krishna everywhere in everything. So when we put that ointment of love of God on our eyes, then we'll actually see Krishna. 
whom the pure devotees see in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. Right? This is the important verse, famous verse. The qualification for seeing Krishna everywhere, you have to have love. When you have love in your heart, then you see Krishna. All right. Eligibility of what? Of the candidate for practicing devotional service. Yes. Go ahead, Sudarshan. Yeah. Without without being elevated to the position of a jnani or wise man, one cannot stick to the principle of worshiping the supreme personality of Godhead. All right, without being elevated to the position of a jnani or a wise man. So it's important for us to understand who is Krishna. You may have attachment for Krishna and you may say, I love Krishna, but you don't know, we don't understand much about Krishna. So it's important for us to get the proper understanding. Otherwise, we'll just be sentimental. We say religion without philosophy is what? Sentiment. Yes. And philosophy without religion? Mental purpose. Right. And so here, Prabhupada is explaining we have to come to the position of a jnani, a wise man. Now remember we spoke about four kinds of people who surrender to Krishna. Now of the four kinds of people, who is the best? Jnani. Why? Because they have knowledge and um, eventually they will come to the platform of pure bhakti. Yes, all of the four people who come, who ser they all have Sukriti, they had pious activities, but they didn't have much faith in the goal. They didn't have much faith in Krishna, but somehow they came to Krishna consciousness. They came for some material reason. So, to actually advance, they have to come to that position of having knowledge. Otherwise, they'll go away. If somebody comes in distress, then when the distress is over, then they'll go away. We had the one young man came one time. What happened? We were out chanting Japa in the morning outside the temple. And there was this young man came by and he was so sad. And we talked to him and he said, yeah, I had an argument with my girlfriend. And she, she broke, broke off our relationship with me. And he, he said, I feel so bad, my girlfriend left me. And so we said, okay, oh, come with us, you know, come to the temple. And he came to the temple and he was chanting and then he took prasadam and everything. And he stayed for a few days. But then after a few days he said, I want to, I want to go now. We said, why? He said, oh, I don't, he said, I feel okay now. He said, I want to go and get, find another girlfriend. <laughs> you know, so that, that's the position, people in the material world. If they don't have proper knowledge, then they'll give up Krishna consciousness. They'll, they will stop worshipping. They may come for some time, but if they learn the philosophy, they'll never forget it. In the same way, somebody may come they have an economic problem, they have no money. And sometimes you get the young man comes, he wants to be a devotee, be a brahmachari. He doesn't have any job, doesn't have any money and he becomes a devotee and he's doing devotional service and maybe he's doing book distribution. And then, and then somebody comes to him and says, why don't you work for me? I'll give you a job. Come and work for me. He said, why just sell these books? You come and work for me, I'll give you a job. And so he gives up Krishna consciousness and goes away. <laughs> because he didn't have much Krishna consciousness. He didn't, 
He didn't have much faith, he didn't have much knowledge. He came for wealth, and as soon as somebody offered him a job, he went away, before he didn't have a job. And then we had another person, he used to come regularly and he used to ask so many questions, he was so nice, we thought, oh, he's going to be a very good devotee, he had so many questions. But then after some time, then he, he stopped coming, I, what happened, what happened, where did he go? Then we, we met him one day in the street and we said, hey, what happened to you, don't come anymore. He said, yeah, I don't have any more questions. <laughs> so just being curious, you know. Sometimes the, the people who ask all the questions, are cur they're not always going to become devotees. So they have to come to the standard of really appreciating Krishna and develop faith in Krishna and become a proper, actually become a jnani, actually have some knowledge, understanding about Krishna. So the one with knowledge, he's the best because he's properly situated. So all the, the four kinds of people, they all have to get knowledge. So everyone, everyone who becomes a devotee, they have to hear the scriptures. You cannot just chant and not hear the scriptures. If you don't hear, about, if you don't hear the message of Krishna, it's not enough. It's not enough to just chant. You have to also hear from the scriptures. It's very important for us. And now, of course, now His Holiness Jai Pataka Maharaj is saying, anybody who wants second initiation, they must do this Bhakti Shastri course, because this will give them a good knowledge of the scriptures. Okay? Who is reading? Yes, me. It can be concluded that a person who is free from the bodily concept of life is an eligible candidate for practice pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. So, if, you, if you're free from the bodily concept of life, of course, that's not so easy. We're all in the bodily concept of life, but we should come to get free of that bodily concept of life. How will we get free of that bodily concept of life? You have to hear. Go ahead, Prabhu. Anyone who has any desire or aspiration for satisfying his senses by becoming more and more important either in the material sense or in the spiritual sense cannot actually relish the really sweet taste of devotional service. Yeah. If we still have some material desire, we want name, adoration, distinction. We say lab, puja, pratishta. Profit, adoration, distinction, that will not allow us to taste Krishna consciousness. Srila Rupa Goswami has therefore compared the processing, uh, proce compared processing this uh, bhukti, material and mukti, liberation, desires with, with being influenced by the black art of, of a witch in both cases, one is in trouble. So two kinds of material desires. One is desire for bhukti, just for gross material desires. And the other one wants mukti, that is the desire for liberation. So these two things are like being influenced by the black art, black art of a witch. In both cases, we get trouble. If you want sense gratification, you get trouble. If you want liberation, you'll get trouble. That's not what we want. So we have to be careful, these material desires. Yes? The material desire to enjoy the material world and the desire to become liberated from the material bondage are considered to be, the, to be two witches and they haunt one like ghosts. As long as this which is remain within the heart, how can one feel transcendental bliss? As long as these two witches remain in the heart, there is no possibility of enjoying the transcendental bliss of devotional service. Yes, right. Two witches, a witch, you know, a witch is an evil, evil woman. 
right? So the desire for sense gratification, the desire for liberation, it's like having this witch, like having these witches in the heart, very trouble, give you a lot of trouble. If they catch somebody who's a witch, they burn them, they don't like them, they're not liked by people. Witches are not popular, they just give a lot of trouble. Okay, here's a, an important verse from Bhagavad Gita, you remember this verse, 18th chapter, text 54. Everybody chant. Brahma Bhuta Prasannatma Nashochati Nakanchati Samasarveshu Bhuteshu Madhbhakti Labhate Param. Right, so Brahma Bhuta, one who knows he's Brahman, then he is Prasannatma, he's a joyful soul. Nasochati Nakanchati. He does not hanker for anything and he does not lament for anything. Sama Sarveshu Bhutishu. He sees everyone equally. Madhbhaktim Labhate Param. So in that state he attains pure devotional service to me. So this is a verse. So qualification for beginning devotional service. We're looking at different qualifications. There's beginning, advancing, and practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, right? So the qualification for beginning was to get the mercy of a devotee. We want the mercy of a devotee who enthuses one with attraction for Krishna. Right? You, sometimes you meet people, you meet a devotee, some, some devotees are very powerful and they go out there and they meet people and people become so inspired. Oh, whoa, oh, I want to be with Krishna, I want to serve Krishna. So the, we need the mercy of a devotee for beginning, not overly attached, not overly detached. That's important, right? That's for the beginning. And then, for advancing, who remembers? What do we need for advancing? Anybody remember? Knowledge and faith. Okay, knowledge of Shastra, yes, we need to know about Krishna from the scriptures. And then, we need to have also faith in Shastra and faith in devotees also. So that's for advancing. What about qualification for practicing? What do we need? For practicing, we need... Free, uh, from the bodily, free from the bodily concept of life. Yes, right. Very good. We shouldn't be in the bodily concept of life. We're practicing devotional service. We should understand trans we're on the transcendental platform. And we shouldn't look at other people on the bodily platform. We shouldn't think we're on the bodily platform and we shouldn't think others are the body. We should see everyone equally, devotees. So this is a qualification for practicing. Another qualification. Thus realizing, one, thus realizing one should abandon all desires, especially the desire for liberation, and endeavor only to please Krishna. So we should endeavor only to please Krishna and give up the desires, give up all material desires, especially desire for liberation, and only want to please Krishna. Vaikuntha to Krishna Loka. Sudarshan Prabhu. Some of the liberated persons who have achieved these four stages of liberation may also develop affection for Krishna and be promoted to Goloka Vrindavan planet in the spiritual sky. In other words, those who are already promoted to Vaikuntha planets and who possess 
the four kinds of liberation may also sometimes develop affection for Krishna and become promoted to Krishna Loka. Hmm. All right, four stages of liberation. That's, we talked about that before. There's Swarupya, Shasti, Samipya, and Swalokya. Living on the same planet, having the same bodily features, enjoying the same opulences, and having the association with the Lord. Four kinds of liberation. So that's in Vaikuntha. But one may be attracted to Krishna and want to be in Goloka Vrindavan. So he can go there. He may be able to, he can go there, he can get that, if he's attracted in that way. If he doesn't feel happy in Vaikuntha, if he still wants to go to Goloka, he can go to Krishna Loka. Yes? Sudarshan. Out of many kinds of devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the one who is attracted to the original form of the Lord, Krishna in Vrindavan, is considered to be the foremost, the first class devotee. Such a devotee is never attracted by the opulences of Vaikuntha or even of Dwarka, the royal city where Krishna ruled. The conclusion of Sri Rupa Rupa Goswami is that the devotees who are attracted by the pastimes of the Lord in Goloka or Vrindavan are the topmost devotees. Mm. All right. So people may feel they're not so attracted to the opulence of Vaikuntha or Dwarka. They just want to be with Krishna and they want to go to Vrindavan, the land of the cows, be in the village. So they're the topmost devotees. All right, just for two minutes, or maybe you know right away. Read the Nectar of Devotion, chapter five, one to six paragraphs. And then, what is Srila Rupa Goswami's principle re regarding who can practice devotional service? Anybody know? And what additional evidence is there to support this principle? How is this principle relevant for the development of the Krishna Consciousness Movement? All right. How many groups do, do we have today? We have the three Chinese ladies, one group. We have our two English-speaking ladies, right? And we have also two men, two groups of men. So four groups. See if you can answer these three questions. Rupa Goswami's principle regarding who can practice devotional service. Chapter, chapter 5. Wow, we're all the way up to chapter 5, huh? One to six paragraphs. Yes. Uh, should I create the groups? Well, has everybody got their book with them? You have your book? Yes, you can take yes. a group. If you like, you can create groups. Yes, no harm. Just for five minutes. The existing groups, right? Yeah. Four groups? Yeah. Okay, then I'll start, I'll, I'll activate the groups.
All right. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Recording stopped. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, Bowman, is everyone back? Yes. Everyone's back? Yes, yes. Okay, so what's the answer? What is Rupa Goswami's principle? Milin? Milin? Yes, yes. The principle is uh, I re, I re, it's open for all without any distinction and is the constitutional uh, obligation of the living entities. Everyone has the birthright to accept the devotional service and to become Krishna consciousness. Okay, everybody agree? Yes. Okay, no argument. Okay, okay sec second question. We'll ask... Uh, uh, we'll ask uh, Bhaktivatsal, what additional evidence is there to support this principle? Hare Krishna, there was multiple evidences. One real life evidence was the Goswami caste after Nityananda came. They were saying that they can only preach. But then Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati he smashed their idea. And we can see that right now it's successful that every, anybody can take Krishna consciousness. And there are some more scriptural evidences, like from the Padma Puran and Skanda Puran and Haribhakti Vilas. They're all saying the similar thing that anybody can become Krishna consciousness. Okay. And how is this principle relevant for the development of Krishna consciousness movement then, Prabhu? Me? Yeah. It's relevant because it shows that we can still preach to anybody, anybody in like any country or any gender any age. We don't need to look for specifically Brahmanas, only they can take it. It's for everybody. For everyone. Okay, very good. Yes. Everybody understand? Agree? Yes. Okay. So just to finish off here, the last slide, purified Vaishnava. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered that Prithiviti, Prithiviti Achiyat Nagarodhigram, right? Famous verse, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Every town and village there should be chanting of the holy name. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered that Prithiviti, all over the world, as many towns and villages are there, my name will be established there. So we are trying to do that. So his name should be established does not mean that they should remain as Yavanas or Malechas 
and simply they should know Lord Chaitanya. No, actually the fact is that everyone should be elevated to the position of Vaishnava, purified Vaishnava. So Prabhupada is saying they shouldn't remain as Yavanas and Malachas. Yavana and Malacha means low-born and meat-eaters and sinful, dirty people with no good habits. They shouldn't remain like that. He said, not that they, they shouldn't just simply know Lord Chaitanya, we have to actually change them. They have to become Vaishnavas, purified Vaishnavas. From Prabhupada's lecture given in Vrindavan, 1972. All right, so just to cover, review what we covered today, we explained the eligibility for beginning and advancing and practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. All right, beginning, in the beginning, what's required? Who remembers? Lila Avatar? Begin. Oh, uh, a little bit of faith. Yeah, faith. And what else? Uh, not, not, not overly detached. Okay. Not overly attached. Right, to yes. Life. Uh -huh. And advancing, Sadhya Madhiji, what do we need to do to advance? Attachment for Krishna Consciousness, love. No, advancing is based on? Knowledge. knowledge. Yes, knowledge and? And faith. And faith, right, right. And for practicing, what about for practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, what's important? Practicing, we shouldn't be in the bodily conception of life, right? Sudarshan, practicing Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, what's the qualification? Eligible. Practicing, don't be in the bodily concept don't, of life. Don't, yes, yes, don't be in the bodily concept of life. Yes. Uh, Okay, and then the, but the independent nature of pure devotional service. Independent nature of pure devotional service means it doesn't depend on anything else. It doesn't depend on knowledge or anything. It doesn't depend on your birth. It doesn't depend on, you know, you have to do this, you have to do that. No, it's independent. And then also, ISKCON's practice. Claiming members from all sections of the Western countries in relation to principles established by Rupa Goswami. Okay, so we said Rupa Goswami's principle is everyone can be a devotee, everyone, anywhere. And a final quote, that missing point is Krishna and the nectar of devotion teaches us how to stimulate our how to stimulate our original love for Krishna and how to be situated in that position where we can enjoy our blissful life. That loving propensity remains imperfectly fulfilled until we know who is the Supreme Beloved. Our love can be fully satisfied only when it is reposed in Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Okay, so that's the end. Any questions, anybody? Yes, um, uh, Gurude, I want to ask, uh, in nectar of devotion, in the, um, the, the, the prayer paragraph, uh, the, the third paragraph is said, uh, Lord Chaitanya made the two brothers and Davia Kasa and Sakara Malika in a village known as Ramakiri in the district of Malda. I think this is their first meet. You think this is what? The, the, the first time the um, uh, Rupa Goswami meet Lord Chaitanya. Yes. Um, but uh, 
but uh, last time in the class you said uh, their first met their first met is at a uh, um prayaga. Yes. Well, that was after they surrendered because you see when they when they met at Ramakali, that was their first meeting. They had not really surrendered there. But when they came, to, when they came to surrender, it was at Prayag. Mm, but if uh, we were uh, we were asked, uh, uh, Rupa Goswami first uh, meet Lord uh, Chaitanya, and where Rupa Goswami first meet Lord Chaitanya? So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's I know. It's, or... it's 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 a it's not a good question. I will ask Aniruddha, I will ask Aniruddha about this because I saw that's wrong. There is some fault there, so I'll ask Aniruddha about how we should deal with this. Because, the, the, okay. because I, I agree with you that they first met at Ramakali, but then they met yes. again at, Allah, at Prayag. And so I'll talk, to, I'll talk to Aniruddha about this and we'll, I'll let you know. It's good you brought that up. It's a good question. Okay. Is there any other question? Yes, yes. Guru Maharaj, I have a confusion about the Vaikuntha and the Goloka Vandavan and the Krishna Loka. I don't know what's the difference of these three places. Vaikuntha and the Goloka Vandavan and the Krishna Loka. Is the Krishna Loka is the same with Goloka Vandavan? Yes. Krishna Loka and Goloka Vandavan is the same. And uh, Vaikuntha, what's the difference with? Well, in Vaikuntha, Vishnu is the Lord of Vaikuntha. But in Krishna Loka, Krishna is there. So it's a different mood. In Vaikuntha, it's Vishnu. So Krishna Loka is higher, is much higher than Vaikuntha. Yes. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question? Okay, so see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki. Jai. Happy holidays, Bhakti Vigna Vinashana Siva Maharaj, Ki. Jai. Go back to Vrinda, Ki. Jai.